Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada on the southern tip of Vancouver Island. Welcome Black Panther. Hi Nipa Nidham Manpreet. Nice to see many of our viewers and welcome Fuang Alexi. Nice to see our members. Sarah, good to have you in this class with us also. Hope your day is going fantastic in Marseille. Students, uh, this class, IELTS speaking part three, landmarks and tourism. Makes sense. We just finished part two. That was uh, talk about a famous landmark or a memorable landmark. I should say memorable landmark that you have uh, visited and you did that so uh, good job everybody who volunteered there that was awesome uh, students this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS visit us there for general IELTS check us out at gieltshelp.com these websites power these live lessons so uh, to maximize the efficiency of your learning in joining these live classes, check out aehelp.com, click this big red button that's just above my head there and get going on some premium IELTS learning. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. You can use the code OVER7 because we all want you to get over seven on your next IELTS and you can do that with the website. So for an extra 10% discount, do that. General IELTS, it is the green background and again, just click that big red button right there uh, to use the premium IELTS package. It's worth it um, and we will use the websites in a bit to talk with students. So get ahead of the curve and get going on these websites. Um, students, Apps, yes, we have them, of course. Academic IELTS help, general IELTS help. Download them from your app stores, install them, link them to the websites. Um, for questions, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com, admin at aehelp.com. Sarah, thank you for putting the URL into the chat, okay. Uh, AJ, yes, using templates will give you a lower band score on your IELTS for sure. You need to use original language. Good question. I'm looking at the chat always, students, and AJ had a good question there for, for me about uh, using templates. So yes, AJ, templates get lower band scores for sure, especially if you make mistakes. So be very careful. Okay, uh, students, Instagram. Uh, join it, check it out, IELTS underscore AE help, G IELTS help. Instagram, we post our live class schedules. Uh, this is the last live class for this week. So uh, we'll have a little short break after this, well, a few days break after this class. And then uh, next live class will be on the 23rd, speaking part one. So uh, to see these schedules and to get notifications of live classes, click the subscribe button, hit the bell button, get notifications. It's a it's free. I mean, it's the least that can be done to uh, have routine learning as we discussed at the start of last class. Padam, Teke, Rahim John, nice to see more of you coming in. Bogdan, good to have you here. Makrand, nice to see you. All right, uh, students, uh, new video up for you today on the channel. Check that out. It's a great practice video. Uh, there it is. There's the URL in the chat. Um, check that out. Absolutely worth it. And use the karaoke subtitles. We put so much effort into making these videos for you to learn. Just give a little bit of effort back to follow the subtitles and learn the vocabulary and the natural English. Um, students, uh, IELTS speaking part three, without further ado, we're going to get into it. Speaking part three connects to speaking part two. So uh, first tip is connect your part two answer uh, to your part three answers. Part 
part three answers. So the examiner will say that is the end of part two. We will now continue with part three. For this part, I will ask you some questions related to the topic of part two. Let's talk about landmarks and tourism. What are some famous landmarks around the world? Okay, um, aside from the London Eye that I had just spoken about, there are many uh, famous monuments Ooh, there's a nice paraphrase for landmarks. Monuments um, around the world, uh, like the Great Pyramids, the Eiffel uh, Tower, and the uh, Taj Mahal. These impressive structures appear in movies and are well known to many people globally. Okay, so fluency, I'm showing some fluency here as well. So answer explanation, I'm connecting and I'm using my information in notes. It's inc from part two. It's incredible how many candidates, and I think it's because a lot of candidates are very nervous, forget about all of the information that they thought about in part two for their part three answers. So it's like, you know, when they're planning part two, they think about the Eiffel Tower, they think about the Taj Mahal, they think about the pyramids. But then when the examiner says, what are some famous landmarks around the world, they forget and they're like, uh, uh, McDonald's and, and Kentucky Fried Chicken? Mm, eh, not so much. <laughs> Maybe if it's the first McDonald's ever built. Um, but no, jokes aside, remember part two. Okay, remember your part two planning. Part two is very, very useful for part three. Okay, all right. Yes, Kentucky Fried Chicken, KFC. Although we might like a bucket of chicken every now and then, it's not really a landmark. Okay, all right. And every time, students, that you see new word synonyms like monuments, monuments are basically landmarks. Okay, it's just another synonym. Write down vocabulary. Learn vocabulary from these classes. I see I got a few good laughs out of Rahim John, Chayani, Fuang, Rakwea. Good. All right. Okay. Uh, students, and then part three, you have these follow up questions. So the examiner's question sheet, and these you can see in your practice materials, um, often will have the question and then follow up question, right? So here the follow up question is, why do people like to visit these landmarks? Um, so give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Okay. All right. So here's the first question again, and then followed by the follow-up question. For high band scores, part three really needs to sound like a conversation, like a good conversation, not just like a Q&A session. Okay. It means question and answer session. So here... It's what are some famous landmarks around the world? Well, aside from the London Eye that I had just spoken about, there are many famous monuments around the world, like the Great Pyramids, the Eiffel Tower, and the Taj Mahal in India. Uh, these impressive structures appear in movies and are quite well, and history books, and are quite well known to many people globally. All right, why do people like to visit these landmarks? Uh, Ishma, don't say what you don't know or don't say what you don't like. It's weird how as humans we like to do this, but uh, it's actually not great communication because it's personal thought rather than uh, desired information. So Ishma is saying, can we say like, I don't know much about international landmarks, but from my country, three uh, main ones are uh, Darbar Square, Kathmandu, uh, Bhaktapur and Patan our uh, UNESCO heritage sites. Um, Ishma, so-so, all right? First of all, I have a hard time believing that you don't know at least a couple of landmarks from around the world. There are so many, right? Um, 
So that's number one. Uh, number two, like, don't tell me what you don't know. Tell me what you do know. That's really important for the IELTS. Okay, it's a good question because a lot of people do it. A lot of people say, well, I don't know about that, but I'll tell you about this. And it's like, I didn't ask you about that. Um, so careful. Okay. All right. Yeah, structures, a famous structures, Makran. So structures, it's a little bit more general than a landmark, Makran. But if you say famous structures, some famous structures around the world, then, or even better than famous, um, when you have famous and well-known together, what's a good word for that, students? Famous and well-known. I'll give you a hint. It starts with an I. So famous plus well-known, popular is good, but even better, an even better uh, adjective here starts with an I-C. <coughs> there you go. Reputed is good, Padam. Common Nipa, not so good here as an adjective. That's right, Makrand, iconic. Yeah, iconic structures, very good. Yes, Requea, iconic. That's right. Iconic structures. Some iconic structures would definitely be landmarks. Okay. So good, good, good. Okay. Uh, let's see what you've answered for this follow-up. Why do people like to visit these landmarks? Um, MD Iqbal, I got you. Here's MD's follow-up response. Iqbal's response. Iqbal would say, <clears throat> uh, people love to visit these well-known landmarks. Some have hobbies to travel and see different cultures. Others go for holiday when they get holiday from work. This would be a band five, Iqbal. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, it's off topic, so it doesn't really answer the question. Okay. It almost sounds like you're telling me why people visit other countries or other cultures rather than why they like to go check out these landmarks, okay? We want to know why people check out these landmarks, Iqbal. So really focus on, and especially in part three, it's very important that you answer the question specifically, okay? Padam says, uh, people prefer to visit these structures because of their unique characteristics. Apart from that, people also visit for scientific research, maybe. Uh, cultural research I, instead of scientific. So Padam, I really like your first um, uh, uh, statement, unique. Okay, I like that. You said unique characteristics. And then you say, apart from that, and use good punctuation and capitalization, students. Apart from that, people also visit for cultural research, maybe. Rather than scientific, I mean, I don't know about you, but I never went to the London Eye going, all right, well, let's get a good uh, measurement of London from the highest point of the London Eye. Um, so no, I, scientific, some, few people, but I wouldn't say it's common for people to do that, right? So think of common, right? Now, Padam, the other element here, so you're on the right track, you're on the right topic, you're answering why people go check out these landmarks, okay? Um, students, what do you think would make sense for Padam to include after unique characteristics? Okay, so Padam here says people prefer to visit these structures because of their unique characteristics. What should go here? I guarantee you that the examiner, most of them are thinking what I'm thinking here. They're like, nark, 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 question mark, question mark, question mark. Um, what do you think Padam should say here to make this a better answer and get a higher band score? All right, Makran and Harjot very quickly say, well, an example, like, what do you mean a unique characteristic, right? Okay, uh, yeah, look at all of you. You're all thinking the same. We're probably thinking correctly, okay? That's how you know you have a correct idea. Everybody has the same idea. We're all going like, what unique characteristics are you talking about, right? So, um, give me one, right, Padam? So, people prefer to visit these structures because of their unique characteristics, like the impressive uh, size and beauty 
of the Taj Mahal with all the white uh, marble or the massive um, size of the pyramids, which are still a bit of a mystery to this day. Okay. Um, so that would be the way to expand on that, right? You want to include that. I want to say automatic information, but um, it's the information that everybody wants to know, right? Like, what do you mean? Right. As soon as you have that question, like, what do you mean? Then you want to answer that. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, Andrew, I see that there. You right away, Andrew says, well, like the pyramids, because they were built with manual labor and they're so big, right? So people are impressed by the beauty, the size, the function of these landmarks. Okay. Um, here's an answer by Domenico, and it's a really nice one as well. Okay, so Domenico, I like how since you've joined these classes, you're really starting to think in a very logical pattern, right? So notice Domenico's answer here. Uh, people like to visit landmarks for various reasons, such as to learn about history, to experience culture and architectural beauty, to have fun and uh, for entertainment and to make memories. So lots of great information there from Domenico. Look at all those fantastic um, answers, explanations. And then, of course, an example. Many of these uh, reasons applied uh, in my case when I visited the London uh, Eye <clears throat> four years ago or five years ago. Right? Make that connection, Domenico, and you're on your way to a band nine. Okay, so connected, clear conversation with good logical answers. Okay, all right. Okay, um, students. Yeah, uh, AJ, don't use templates. Um, just use nice natural English. You can use phrases correctly in context, but again, templates will not work. Okay. Stop using templates. Learn them. Don't learn the template as a template. Learn the template as an English phrase used in a specific content, right? And you can use them in speaking and in writing as long as it's natural, but it should not sound like a template, all right? Okay. All right. Um, yeah, Sarah's got a very good explanation there in the chat as well, okay? about templates. Okay, um, students, uh, let's do lots of speaking today. So I really want to hear from many of you today. So we're going to get into these questions. I've got lots of part three questions for you. Uh, and um, I want to give you lots of vocabulary, grammar, feedback on your speaking. So let's just jump right into it. I know many of you, especially after a week of learning, those of you who are following these classes are really looking forward to just a good interaction. So let's do that. All right, um, so let's jump into more volunteer speaking. This is how you volunteer for speaking, everybody. We're going to actually talk to students. I'm going to teach you vocabulary, strategy, and IELTS through uh, peer interaction and learning, okay? Uh, go to aehelp.com. I'll uh, stick that into the chat as well. Sarah's done a really, Sarah, you're faster than me this time. <laughs> um, so Sarah's got the instructions in the chat and the links, so it makes it easy for newcomers to uh, do this. Okay, um, log into your My Student account, and then go to uh, Student Partner Speaking, Enable your microphone. Okay, make sure your microphone is working. Test it with, if it's your first time, especially students, please test it with somebody else, okay? It will just make the session flow so much smoother. All right, then you'll see me in there as master. And then um, you want to click, or you want, not click, you want to type, I want to volunteer. Let me show you this, okay? So um, here, is the website that we're using. Again, you can join 
the premium version of the uh, IELTS package by clicking that big uh, red button right there above my head. It's a one-time payment, not a lot of money for what you get. We are world leaders with IELTS. Uh, click on my student account once you're in, and then um, you can explore all of the awesome tools that you have here, the audio CDs, practice exams, interactive course, and then you want to click on this student partner speaking there. Okay. Uh, accept the terms and uh, you're in the chat interface. There it is. And you'll see lots of your peers already in here, ready to learn. Um, and then you'll see me too. You'll see me in here as master. That'll be my handle. And uh, all I want you to do after you uh, muster up the courage <laughs> to volunteer, once you've mustered the courage to volunteer, then uh, you can um, send me a message with this little blue envelope next to my handle, Master, saying, I want to volunteer. Okay. All right. So uh, let's uh, get into it. Um, let's kick it off with Andrew. Andrew's been very patient in the last couple classes here. So, Andrew, get your English cap on and uh, hopefully you are ready to go. Are you ready? I'm always going to ask you just to make sure you, your computer didn't short circuit, you didn't run away with the circus. All right, Andrew. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? I can. How are you today, Andrew? Uh, I've been through my first week at university. Last semester, a bit of a mess, but I think I'm coping just fine. And now I'm here practicing my IELTS, and hopefully tomorrow it will be the same. All right, Andrew, that sounds exciting and fun at the same time. Um, do you have a full class load this semester? Uh, yes and no. I have about six lectures per week and the labs will start, uh, I think, the week after that. Uh, but yeah, for now I can set aside about three hours to practice every day. Nice. Good. Okay. Um, so you got uh, the syllabus from every class. You know what each uh, class is going to look like, right? I'm oh yeah, absolutely. All the syllab syllabus have been available since uh, September 1st, so it's, it's, a, it's not a problem. Syllabi. Syllabi, yes, yes. <laughs> That's a tricky Syllabi. plural. <laughs> I think it comes from Latin, right? That's why it has a bit of a weird plural. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exact, exact. That's exactly right, yes. Uh, correct, it's a syllabi, yes. Um, we don't use the plural so much. That's the other reason why most people don't know it. Um, it's, like da it's like another good example of one of those weird plurals that people aren't familiar with is data. Right. Many people yeah, don't, yeah. don't know that data is actually the plural. So they think about it like it's the singular. Uh, do you know the singular of data? I think it's datum. That is very good. Andrew. Yeah. impressive. Yeah, it's datum is the singular and plural is data. All right, Andrew. Well, with that interesting bit of knowledge out of the way, let's talk about landmarks and tourism. How does that sound? Excellent. <laughs> All right, then let's get into it. Here we go. Um, what are some famous landmarks around the world? Besides the Brandenburg Gates, uh, I've discussed in part two. Uh, most people are also familiar with the Eiffel Tower in Paris, with the Buckingham Palace uh, in London, and the Statue of Liberty in New York. Why do people like to visit these landmarks? Well, I think the vast majority of people want to experience uh, unique sites, uh, meaning that uh, it's been a great feat of humanity to build these attractions. Uh, great pyramids of Egypt have been built with manual labor only, and so far I don't think anyone has managed to rival that feat. In your opinion, why do people like to travel to other countries? I believe that first and foremost, uh, they want to experience uh, different cultures uh, because when they spe 
spend all their life in one place, it's very easy to believe that the whole world is like this. But in reality, uh, just hopping on a train and traveling for five hours in any direction will clearly indicate that uh, different areas have completely different lifestyle and it helps to broaden one's horizons. When I first traveled uh, at the age of seven, I was amazed at how uh, people in Poland were different from Ukrainians. Okay. I'm going to stop there. All right, Andrew, really starting to master that high level of English. Good for you. Um, I will say band nine. Um, I've, we, we just actually filmed a video with um, a woman from Vietnam who got a band nine on her IELTS. And um, I think that your English is very comparable with hers and your answers are very comparable with hers when we film the interview. So, uh, so I, I say with confidence that uh, most examiners will give you a band nine for your answers. Grammatically, they're accurate. Information is accurate. You give a good amount of detail. You have a good flow, good fluency. So you're checking off all of the boxes that are needed um, for uh, that band nine. And um, you're using a lot of uh, high level natural expressions very accurately. So um, we've had a couple people in the chat asking about, you know, using templates. And uh, I'm going to work backwards here a little bit. So the question was, in your opinion, why do people like to travel to other countries? And then you said, I believe that first and foremost. Um, so first and foremost is a, a phrase that could be perceived as a template, right? So some students use this first and foremost. But the way that you're using it in this context, it's so accurate that it's not a template, it's just natural, right? So you would hear people say, well, naturally, first and foremost, they want to experience different cultures uh, because they've spent their entire lives in one place. So it's to help broaden one's horizons. Now, if you can, Andrew, include the top two answers, right? So you really focused on this one answer and it's fine. You'll get that band nine, but always work to improve your communication, right? So for great communication, I would say, you know, mention the second one. What would be another reason why people like to travel to other countries? I would say people also want to practice foreign languages in their natural environments because it's one thing when they practice it in classrooms, but when they actually go out and talk to people on the streets, it's, it's a completely different experience. Okay. Uh, so I typed it up a little bit differently with a little bit more advanced uh, English, um, uh, Andrew. And uh, here you can also include yourself, right? Because you're planning to study in the UK or the US? Uh, in Germany. In Germany. Here in Germany. In Germany. Yeah, but yeah. a lot of people in, in big cities, <laughs> almost everyone speaks English. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, you can include an ex or you can make up the example. Um, yeah. It's called immersion. So you immerse yourself in language. Okay. Yes. So uh, just repeat after me. People want to immerse themselves among native speakers to master a second language they have been learning in school all their lives. People want to immerse themselves among native speakers to master second languages that they have been learning in school all their lives. Like uh, German for me. Like German for me. Well, actually, what? it's a third language. Well, but it would make sense because you're in Germany talking yes, to yes. the examiner there, right? Um, so that would be good. So think about those two points. The other point that came to my mind here would be uh, to rest and relax, right? So people also want to go to other countries to uh, get away from their daily grind and relax, like on the beach in Hawaii, right? So that would be another yes, uh, exactly. approach as well. Okay, so... Uh, as you're getting better and better, and as you're securing that band eight, band nine level each time you answer, always think dynamically. So think about what else could I give here? What would be another perspective to really just secure that perfect communication standard, okay? Yeah, see, I usually go over the question after the live stream or shortly after to double check. Maybe I could have given a better answer or give it another idea entirely because sometimes it's it's a bit hard to come up with perfect ideas right away. Absolutely. So. Um, people have to keep this in mind that um, exams are timed, right? We have time limits in exams, and this is the nature of examinations in most cases. The difference between an assignment and an exam is the exam uh, puts in the variable of time, right? So the IELTS speaking is especially 
um, exemplary of this. So it's it shows this importance of time because you really only have 12 to 15 minutes to show your English level. And that's where a lot of people say, hey, that's not fair. A human cannot show a language ability in 12 to 15 minutes, right? But you have to and you have to work with that time constraint so um, it's very smart that you're doing that and um, again my tip is to consider how can i give dynamic answers within this time limit okay i think this time limit can sometimes work out in your favor either uh, because you can get a topic that you're familiar with and you can give a lot of great examples and talk at length while sometimes you give awful topics like about math or about famous people and you start to struggle even though your English might be good. So it's mostly about lack of ideas. I agree with you 100%. I think it's a double-edged sword, so it's important to practice and make sure that it works in your favor, not against you uh, when you're in the exam. Absolutely. All right, Andrew, thank you so much for uh, volunteering. Thank you, Have a great rest of the weekend. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye for now. Bye. All right, everybody, I'm going to refresh my page here. Um, when we have lots of students uh, joining up, um, sometimes we need to just refresh the chat page to get it working well. Um, so I'm, I'm, I've refreshed. What that also means is you need to send me your messages again, everybody. So you need to realign yourself and then just uh, send me a, a message and send it to master saying, I want to volunteer, okay? So I've refreshed my page. Refresh your page as well and then we'll connect. Thank you for the thumbs up, everybody, for Andrew. Pleasure to speak with him. Um, he's in Germany doing his studies and doing IELTS and being very studious, absolutely. Okay, um, <clears throat> so I think Domenico has been quite patient. We haven't heard from him in a while. Uh, Marife, I would love to hear from you as well, another one of our premium students, as well as Rachmatilaev, Rachmatilaev, right? Um, okay, uh, Domenico, hello back at you. Hello, are you ready? I had to copy your hello there. Okay, are you ready, Domenico? Domenico's ready. All right. Hello. Hi, Domenico. How are you? I'm doing great. Well, I was actually thinking of heading out for a jog on the promenade, but I thought I'd pitch, I'd pitch in and volunteer for some part three IELTS questions. <laughs> so I'm sitting at my desk at my workstation, holding a pick me up coffee. All right. What well about you? I'm doing good, thank you. Uh, exercising the brain and then exercising the body is a good idea. So after we after we get done here, you know, put on those shoes and go for that jog. Don't don't don't. Yes, wait till tomorrow. exactly. <laughs> and Domenico, I mean, this topic, um, Italy has a few landmarks, right? Yes, like the Colosseum. Uh, I went to the Colosseum. I actually went to the Colosseum in 2000 when I, after leaving uh, high school. Before I enrolled, uh, I enrolled at the university. I it was yeah, it was a memorable, uh, a memorable experience, you know, uh, because uh, it was yeah, walking around uh, the Colosseum. Uh, you know, it was like feeling the history, the culture of the place. Uh, it was actually a surreal experience. I have been to the Colosseum, so I know what you're talking about. Um, Domenico, when I said Italy has a few landmarks, I, I, that was a joke, obviously. Um, there's a few ways to say that in English. We say euphemism. Do you know this word, euphemism? euphemism. No, I don't know this word. <laughs> Repeat after me, euphemism. 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 Yeah. Euphemism. You euphemism. Can you yeah. Euphemism. Euphemism. Yeah. Euphemism. A euphemism is an understatement. So Italy being um, the heart of the Roman Empire, um, it has extremely famous cities with uh, the Vatican, St. Peter's Square, the Basilica, 
uh, you have the Colosseum, the Pantheon, and the list just goes on and on and on, the Sistine Chapel. So it's arguably got the highest density of landmarks. I've in been the granted world. the opportunity to visit all these uh, I've been granted the opportunity to visit all these places in my life. Yeah. So if you're Italian and you get the topic of uh, talk about landmarks for part two and part three, then it's probably a good time to go. Yes. Thank you for that <laughs> examiner. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Where do you want me to start now? You know, that can also be a double edged sword. So when you have a lot of information on a topic like landmarks in Italy, uh, then you have to be really careful to control yourself, not to just like talk, 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 and then keep getting interrupted. Right. So you really have to control your your thoughts and your ideas exactly so you need you need to structure your ideas you need to keep in mind what you are going to say so that uh, you avoid uh, the examiner interrupting you absolutely yeah okay um, let me ask you a few questions and uh, we'll go from there are you ready yeah I'm ready Okay. I'm ready to roll. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, uh, do you think it is good or bad for countries to welcome tourists? Well, uh, I, my opinion, it's generally good for countries to welcome tourists because tourism can provide a significant boost to a country's economy, create jobs, and promote cultural exchange, sorry. For example, many countries like Italy uh, with, uh, a, uh, with a rich cultural heritage such as uh, uh, can uh, uh, every year host uh, many tourists from all over the world with cuisine, uh, arts uh, and uh, many beautiful landmarks uh, where they make memories. How has tourism changed in your country over the years? Well, I would say tourism in my country has experienced significant uh, growth over the years due to the development of uh, new infrastructures and improved facilities and amenities. In the past, uh, it was mostly limited to traditional tourist attractions such as historical sites and natural landscapes. However, with the advent of technology and increased accessibility, tourists are now able to explore lesser known areas and engage in various activities such as, such as adventure tourism of food tourism or and cultural tourism all right i'm going to stop there domenico you're doing great good for you i'm going to start you off with a thumbs up there beautiful language really nice grammar really nice choice of vocabulary um a little bit more fluency a little bit faster and you'll get a band nine with that so that was you're getting up into the eight range now because that's very good english okay um, <laughs> so um, let me show everybody what I mean by that. So what is considered to be a band eight? Well, band eight is considered when you're giving good information in complex sentences that are accurate to the question. So here the question was, do you think it is good or bad for countries to welcome tourists? And you said, in my opinion, it's generally good. So you didn't just say good, but you said generally good, which is which gives me an idea of where you're going with it for countries to welcome tourists. Okay, so you use the question, you reflected the question, and then you made it complex. You said, because it boosts economy. So really good use of the word boosts. You said another point, and then you said, and promotes cultural exchange. Really nice use of uh, English vocabulary. Promotes cultural exchange. And it's a very good idea as well. And then you used your own country. You said, like a, uh, like a country like Italy, with a rich cultural history, hosts many uh, tourists every year, and you explained it. That was very well done. Okay, um, same thing, next question. Present perfect, tourism changed. Your answer reflected present perfect. You said, has experienced significant growth. So not only are you using present perfect, but you're giving good detailed information 
right? And then again, complex sentence due to improved infrastructure and facilities. And then you said in the past, it was limited to more like traditional sites, like visiting the Colosseum. However, now tourists explore lesser known areas such as venture tourism and food tourism. Just one tip. I mean, I'm always, you know, being critical, Domenico. Um, I would just throw in these little examples to really create visual imagery for the listeners. So outstanding communication creates imagery. Okay. Are you familiar with this word imagery? Yeah. Imagery? Yes. Yeah. Images. Yes. So um, humans love to see. We love to see our, our world is our eyes, right? Our eyes are just so, so important. So when you say in the past, it was limited to tr traditional historical sites like the Colosseum. Um, however, it was a nice however there. Um, with um, tourism these days, they're able to explore lesser known areas. By the way, it's a very nice piece of English vocabulary, lesser known areas. And then you said, I think such as adventure tourism and food tourism. What would be a quick example of food tourism? Food tourism, for example, there are many dishes that you can savor in the south of Italy. Uh, I don't know, um, like uh, carbonara pasta. It's a, 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 one of the most popular dishes in Italy, for example. Carbonara pasta or oh, uh, yeah. pasta with mussels. Just which one. Is really, just, yeah. just one. Just one. I know the I know the seafood pasta too, but just one quick example, right? I know that a lot of people, because of Netflix, uh, the Napolitan pizza. So <laughs> Netflix has all these food shows, and several of them really like emphasize the Napolitan pizza of Italy, and it's so people have been flooding to Italy to eat the original Napolitan pizza. And it's like, <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Traditionally, this dish, uh, this dish. Uh, is traditionally from Rome. In fact, you can uh, savor the most delicious uh, carbonara pasta in Rome. And I, I, I had the opportunity to savor to to dig into this to dig myself into this dish. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, instead of dig into, I would use the word indulge. Use the word indulge. Indulge. Too. Indulge. Yeah. yeah. Indulge. I In had this word at the back of my head, actually. Yeah. Repeat after me. And students, when we're doing repetition work, it's for everybody. And we're always um, showing kind of band nine level English here. So indulge into this flavorful dish. Yeah, indulge. Yeah, I had the opportunity to indulge myself into this flavorful dish when I went to Rome into into Rome in two thousand back in two thousand. So you know, perfect, perfect, I, Domenico. I, I, you know, I stuffed my face. I pinched <laughs> out on the delicious spread of of food that I found that I found in Rome. That I, that, Perfect. I could, that I could say we're in Rome, you now, know. Domenico, when you're practicing, this is exactly what you want to do. So you want to apply as much of the vocabulary as you can. However, when you're in the exam, limit yourself, okay? So if you've already <laughs> said indulge myself into this flavorful dish, maybe don't go off into stuff my face. So just stop with the indulge, okay? All right, Domenico, yeah. thank you so much for volunteering. Have an awesome rest of your weekend. And thank have you a so much, delicious sir pizza for me as well okay bye Domenico bye all right that was Domenico I got to do another refresh here students I see many people joining up so I'm just going to refresh the chat interface uh Black Panther's got the carbonara uh, pasta <laughs> emoji going um thank you for the thumbs up everybody refresh the page uh and then send me um uh a message again because the web socket closed for me I think we were overloading the system there were so many of us in here Fashiha, I see that you reloaded really fast. Abhi, very good. All right, Abhi's here with us. So just uh, students, if you can't see or if the page is stuck, just refresh it, reload it, okay? Um, the live class, there's just so many of us interacting. I think we're jamming it up, so. All right, Abhi, uh, are you ready? 
All right. Javelon, Kadarov. Yes, absolutely. You can join. Go to aehelp.com, create an account, get into the My Student Speaking, and then um, volunteer. Okay. It kind of, it's logical. All right. Abhi. Hello. Hi, Abhi. Yeah, hello. How, How are, are you? you? I'm good. I'm good. Abhi, I, I, I'm quite I'm certain we talked. Good. We talked before, right? We've had a... No, no, it's my first time. Is it your first time? Well, good for you. Yeah. All right. How are you feeling? I am too nervous. <laughs> too it's nervous. my first time to talk with you. I am, I al I am your always uh, daily viewer, so... All right. All right. I'm well, too excited to talk with you. Good, good. I'm excited to have you here. Um, yeah, and uh, a li little bit of excitement is okay. Just don't get too nervous. That, that can... Uh, can be yeah. difficult. Yeah, it's just questions and answers, questions and answers. I'm just another guy here in Canada sipping on my coffee. Think about it that way. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Abhi. Um, why are you taking IELTS? Mm, for my undergraduate course, uh, I, I want to do my undergraduate course in foreign, so I have to take IELTS exam. Sorry, you're going to uh, do your undergrad in Poland, did you say? Sorry. Which country are you planning to do your undergraduate course? Uh, I want to go for European countries, but country is not fixed yet. Okay, so you haven't actually decided on the country, but a European country. All right, mm -hmm. well, let me help you with that. We'll get into it um, a little bit. Um, here we go. Let's discuss city planning. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here okay. we go. All right. So what are some ways that cities in your country are changing in the past decade? No, uh, actually, uh, the, uh, actually, I'm too nervous. So I'm talking to it, talking to it. So. All right. Let me help you out a little bit. OK, when you're too nervous, the first thing that you need to do is to stop yourself from being nervous. Uh, there's ways to do that. So a lot of people get really nervous in their actual IELTS exam as well. The first tip up here is make sure to go to your IELTS exam early, like uh, 40, 50 minutes before it starts, and talk to other mm -hmm. candidates. That really helps to let go of some of that anxiety and just get more comfortable, okay? So go early. Of course, what you're doing right now, volunteering here and hopefully talking with other students through the website, that will also help. Now, the third yeah. tip that I can give you is when you feel like you're nervous and your brain is blocked, like you're drawing a blank, you're like, Bleh, I, you know, short circuit, um, then use the question right away. And if the question has a time expression or a time indicator, use that. So in this question, there's a time indicator, right? So we have, what are some ways that cities in your country are changing in the past decade? Uh, what is a decade? Decade, uh, 10 years. Time yeah. So start with that. So in the last 10 years. Okay, so uh, that will help you get going. So you basically, because with English, you can always take the time expression and move it either to the end or the beginning of a sentence. So as soon as you mm -hmm. catch that time expression, like last year, last decade, last week, uh, next week, uh, then you can take that and start with that. So in the coming week or 10 years ago or in the past 10 years, okay? So you can start with that. So in the last 10 years. And then um, notice how it says, in uh, what are some ways that cities in your country so what's your country and Nepal Nepal right so you can yeah. immediately kind of think of the easy part of the question first so in the last 10 years in Nepal uh, what's a mm -hmm. well-known city in your country Kathmandu yeah I love that name of that city I keep saying yeah. that. Right? <laughs> so in the last 10 years in Nepal in uh, cities like Kathmandu mm -hmm. um, right uh, and then now you're just kind of starting your brain going. So you're getting it out of that position of nervousness and you're allowing your brain to think about ways that it has changed and has become modernized, more infrastructure, more buildings, more landmarks potentially. Um, so okay. um, so we'll, we'll try this one more time. Are you ready? Yeah, okay. All right, here we go. So let's discuss city planning. Uh, what are some ways that cities in your country are changing in the past decade? 
Okay, well, in the past 10 years in my country, Nepal, uh, in Kathmandu city, there are many uh, there are many things uh, changed in the in this decade. So, uh, uh, last uh, last times uh, here are some political issues that uh, remains the remains cities uh, pushes backwards. And in the current current situation, that's all was uh, that's that's all is changed. And some new leaders uh, lead the cities and do some so many improvements like uh, building building a good infrastructure of the countries. And also managing the managing some of the polluted 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 things around the countries, and uh, also doing some extra work so with extra works for youngsters to maintain them in a healthy healthy way. And also, uh, is okay. there is there anything you would change in the way that cities function these days? Yes. Sorry, I cannot think about this. I Use cannot know more about this. Use the question. Okay, I'm going to ask you one more time. Use the question. Is there anything you would change in the way cities function these days? A function? Uh, at the past time, a function was uh, mainly happened at the party places and some of the uh, some of the local gardens and also parks. But uh, now what I'm... Uh, uh, they, that's all was changed in the time decades. So uh, nowadays, many of the functions happen in the big party palaces and also also at the hotels. And some of the noise pollutions also decreased from this. This happens, and uh, many people was very happy with that. Uh, that with these changes. So I think this is uh, most major changes what happened in the last time. All right, let's stop there. So I'm going to give you some feedback. Okay, you're st the yeah. good the good news is I can hear that you're starting to get over your anxiety. So you're starting to go, okay, I'm starting to calm down now a little bit and uh, think about English mm -hmm. a bit, which is great, okay? So um, yeah. once you feel more confident and once you feel a little bit more brave about answering the questions, then you have to be careful not to go too quickly and not to... Um, confuse the examiner. So go a little bit slower and really pay attention to clear, accurate grammar and answers, okay? Currently, okay. with these answers, you'd be about a band five. However, it sounds to me like you should be closer to a 6.57, but you have to show me that with good grammar, good information, okay? So in the yeah. second question, is there anything you would change in the way cities function these days? Use the question. So uh, yes, there are some changes that I would make to cities, uh, like yeah. uh, building more bicycle lanes to reduce traffic. Uh, in Kathmandu, there's a lot of traffic and this makes the city very noisy and very polluted. And I think that uh, this has to change. So slow and okay. steady, okay, slow and steady, okay? All mm -hmm. right, um, so keep that in mind, okay? Show up to the exam early, mm -hmm. all right? Use the questions when you feel nervous and don't go too fast and then you'll get a better band score. All right, Abby? Yeah, okay. All right, keep up the good work and come back again. That's another great way to build confidence, okay? okay? All right, Abhi. Have a great rest of your day in Nepal. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye for now. All right, let's give a, uh, Abhi a thumbs up. He was really nervous there, and he really deserves a thumbs up for putting himself out there and and uh, volunteering. Uh, Jusser Beck, I think, maybe somebody we haven't heard from in a while. Jusser Beck, let's try Jusser Beck. Jusser Beck, are you ready? I think you were asking me in the chat as well. I really, really, really want to volunteer. Uh, so if Jester Beck is with us, let's give Jester Beck a shot at this. Jester Beck. No rush. Yes, there is a rush. Um, <laughs> so if you're there, if you haven't left, yeah, there you are. Good. Just for back. I'm not sure what's going on there with the connection, but 
All right, Jester Beck, check. Yeah, I thought so. so Jester Beck says, I have bad internet. Uh, yeah, Jester Beck, you definitely uh, want to uh, check and make sure that you've got some good internet going. Uh, Fashiha at the top here. Let's jump back to the top. I'm looking for some new students today too, everyone. So hang in there, but let's give let's give some newcomers a shot as well. So Fashiha, are you ready? I think Fashiha has someone new. We have so many lovely, lovely people in here. And, it's for everyone. It's for you to interact together with each other, not just me. So don't just expect to use this to, hey, talk to Adrian, but talk to each other also. I highly, highly encourage you to use this chat interface to talk with other IELTS students in practice as well. Okay, Fashiha. Hello. Hi, Fashiha. How are you? Uh, hello, sir. I am good. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. May I ask uh, for the pronunciation of your name? Uh, yes, sir. It's Fasiha. Fasiha. That's. I was thinking that's probably the better way. Yes. Thank you for confirming that with me. Fasiha. Beautiful. Uh, all right, Fasiha. Yeah. Can you tell everybody where you are and why you're taking the IELTS? Uh, I am right now in New Delhi, India, and I am taking IELTS for my uh, further study in uh, Germany. In Germany. So you might even meet yes. up with Andrew at some point in time, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> right. you, know, you never know, right? The world is a small place. Hey, I remember you from the chat. All right, Fasiha. Uh, may I ask, why Germany? Uh, sir, because my sister lived there, and uh, Germany is free of cost. There is no tuition fees. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Germany sure understands the value of education. Yeah, that's a good good uh, reason yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love that part of them. Yeah, absolutely. They have a lot of great progressive uh, systems. Okay, Fasiha, um, let me ask you a few questions. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm ready. Okay, let's do it. Um, so let's uh, discuss city planning. Um, what are some ways that cities in your country are changing in the past decade? Uh, so can you repeat your question? Uh, I yes. just got it. Mm -hmm. What are some ways that cities in your country are changing in the past decade? Um, I believe uh, there are uh, numerous of things that is changing nowadays. Uh, so I can say, uh, many sustainable uh, things are improving. Uh, like there, uh, there are many uh, roadways and uh, lots of improvements are there that uh, that is uh, infrastructure and uh, maybe there are uh, good uh, options for buying online stuffs and food is this good or bad uh, i definitely say it is a good improvement uh, because life is getting easier uh, because of these facilities so uh, that's a good point. Is there anything you would change in the way that cities function these days? And if yes, how? Hello? Yes, I'm here. Is there anything you would change in the ways cities function these days? And if yes, how? Uh, I will definitely change it uh, in the in the sense of improving because I belong to an architectural uh, background. So I love to give them a better uh, transport system. Uh, I can say uh, better roadways uh, because some of the cities don't have a, a good uh, quality of uh, road or uh, they are lacking in transport and they are there are lots of traffic so i will uh, do some urban planning for them
Okay, I'm going to stop there for a second and just give you some feedback. Um, it's tricky to assess your English because some of your features are very high and some of them are on the low end. So, um, for example, you have some really good vocabulary. So uh, when you say, for example, I would do some urban planning, I would do some urban planning is very good English. OK, but then uh, you use some very low level English in some parts as well. Um, there are a couple of words that I always tell students to really avoid in good communication. Uh, and in your IELTS interview, those okay. words include the word things and stuff, and you used both. <laughs> okay. um, in fact, you used the plural for stuff, which is very awkward. You said stuffs, um, which is quite awkward. So really, really avoid using things and stuff, okay? Um, you said, when I asked you the first question, I said I asked you, what are some ways that cities in your country are changing? Now, I think we had a little bit of trouble with the connection. You didn't hear the question clearly once or twice, maybe. But you did. Yes, a, yeah, but you did a really good job to stay confident and just clearly ask for a repeat. So you just said, uh, could you just please repeat that question for me again? That was really good. If that happens in the IELTS where you don't catch the question or it's unclear, uh, do that exactly that so just say uh, could you please repeat that question I didn't catch it and that was really good so I said so then you said um, I believe there are numerous of things it's really awkward okay you don't want to start awkward like that because then the examiner will give you a band five even if you're fluent okay so I believe there are numerous ways that cities are changing not numerous of things okay so uh, that cities are changing. Okay, can you try that? Um, I believe there are numerous ways there that cities are changing nowadays. Just repeat after me. I believe there are numerous ways that cities are changing nowadays. I believe there are numerous of ways to change. Nope. <laughs> nope. I'm going to go, nope. Um, I believe there are numerous ways that cities are changing nowadays. There are numerous of things that cities are changing nowadays. No, no things, no things. So this is what we're going to have to do, okay, is we're going to have to train you to clean up your vocabulary selection so that you get a good band score because as long as you're making these awkward mistakes and using the word things it's going to continuously drop your score okay you have to get rid of that from your communication all right let's do it one more time i believe there are numerous ways that cities are changing nowadays you can do it one more time. I believe there are numerous ways that cities are changing nowadays. I'm not sure if I've lost. Fasiha, are you still there? Did I lose you? Hello. Yeah, I'm still here. I don't know if you. I can Hello. Hear, I can hear you clearly, Fasiha. Can you hear me on your end? I believe there are numerous of uh, things in ways that cities are changing nowadays. Not quite. So you have to get rid of things. We don't use the word things, Fasiha. No things. Zero. Never use the word things. Okay. That's my challenge for you is as you're speaking, as you're communicating, try to completely eliminate the word things from your vocabulary. Okay. I believe there are numerous of things uh, that cities are changing nowadays. Well, keep practicing that, Fasiha, and this is for everybody, okay? Fasiha, thank you for volunteering. Come back again. We'll talk soon, okay? And again, keep practicing. Keep practicing to eliminate those unnecessary words. Bye for now. Bye, so. All right. So, no things. Girls, guys, no things, okay? The problem with the word things, there are many, but the main problems with the word things is things is confusing. Your examiner doesn't know what you mean when you say things, 
We don't know what that is. Is that infrastructure? Is that education? Is that amenities and services like restaurants, uh, hospitals, uh, universities? So what do you mean by things, right? Things has zero value, especially in academic or professional communication. So you have to get rid of it from your communication. That's a very quick and easy way to improve your IELTS band score. Okay, so be very careful with that. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, who else do we have here with us today? Uh, Rakim. I think we spoke to a little while ago at the very bottom here, our premium student very patiently waiting. Rakim, are you ready? Hopefully Rakim is there. All right. Thanks for the thumbs up, everybody. Yeah, Fasiha, for sure. Absolutely. So you put yourself out there and I respect you for that. I think you should get a high band score, but you really have to just feedback and practice, feedback and practice. Okay. All right, uh, Rakim. Hello, Rakim. Do you hear me, good sir? I don't hear you. So not sure if you're there or not. Uh, students, again, check your internet connections. Make sure you've got a solid, solid connection, especially when you're using YouTube and a chat interface simultaneously, okay? So check your internet connections and check your hardware too. Make sure your microphone and uh, speakers are all set up right. Uh, it could sometimes be on my end as well. Again, doing a refresh is sometimes the way to solve it. Rakim, I cannot hear you, so check it out, see what's going on there. Meanwhile, I'll try somebody else. Um, let's try uh, Padam. I think Padam has been very patient here at the top. So Padam, are you ready? All right. Yes, Hapsa, click that link. Okay, Ashish is saying, Fasiha, I sent you a message. So I think Ashish is trying to help you out with some of your speaking there, Fasiha, if you see that. Uh, Padam, if you're still in here with me, um, definitely send me a sign that you are still here in the chat. Asmita, this is absolutely a free class, 100% free. Even the website you can use free. You just need to join up. Okay, Padam, I don't see you there, so <clears throat> let's just jump underneath to Fuang. Fuang, are you ready? All right, Fuang is in Vietnam and a very hardworking student at that. Let's see if she is still here with us. It's getting kind of late there, yeah. Okay, Fuang. Hi, sir. Hi, Fuang, how are you? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Fuang, you were in the last class also, right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And did you have an idea for a famous landmark uh, that you have visited? Um, yes, I have visited uh, Hoi An, ancient town in my country. Um, I, I, I want to have a chance to speak in part two, but... Mm. <laughs> Fair enough. You're like, but, um, and so you said it's a it's a famous ancient town. Uh yes, it's um so famous. Uh, located in the north of Vietnam. Okay. What's the name of the town? Uh, Hoi An ancient house. Oh, that's literally the name of it. Okay, got you. All right. Well, you'll have a chance now to make a connection to it. Are you ready for some part three questions? Yes, sir. All right. Here we go. So let's talk about landmarks and tourism. What are some famous landmarks around the world? Um, well, some famous landmarks around the world which come to my mind right now are the Red Wall of China's Eiffel Tower, Disney Opera House, and my ancient house I have just mentioned in part two. Why do people like to visit these landmarks? Um, I think the reasons why people attend to pay visits to the landmark is they want to broaden their knowledge that the church learned through book. I mean, 
people can know more about historical monuments and have a significant connection to their roots in the past. Do you think it is good or bad for countries to welcome tourists? Um, I think it is good for countries to welcome tourists. Our government developed the infrastructure in tourism to welcome tourists from all over the world and can boost a sense of cultural exchange between foreigners and citizens. As a shows, the revenue of national economies will increase and create thousands of jobs. Has tourism changed in your country over the years? Mm, tourism has changed a lot in my country, Vietnam, over the last 10 years. In the past, both citizens tended to travel in the nation because of uh, the cost and the transportation issue. But nowadays, they can easily fly to other nations just by booking a ticket through app on the phone. Has this been a positive? Uh, oh yes, absolutely. The government pay more attention to the investment budgets on the infrastructures of tourism that the national economy has been enriching dramatically for 50 years. Okay, um, Fong, I'm gonna stop there. You're doing great. Uh, really good, really nice, Fuang. Very good job. That would be about a band uh, seven point five to eight. I'm actually leaning closer to the eight. I think that was one of your best uh, performances for these few questions. Your answers were very clear, very accurate. You felt very comfortable answering these questions in English, and examiners can feel that. So when a student is fluent and confident in their ideas, in their vocabulary that comes across to the examiner and that's when you start to get into that band 7.5 to 9 range so the not just good but going towards very good expert uh, category okay so um, you answered the questions confidently and I think that you know one of the reasons why you're doing that Fong and correct me if I'm wrong is that you're really good at using the questions now so you're very good at flipping the question into the answer right um, so as soon as I ask you, um, in your opinion, why do people like to travel to other countries? Uh, or did I not? I don't think I asked you that one, maybe. Um, I said, what are some famous landmarks? He said, well, some famous landmarks around the world which come to my mind right now are the Great Wall of China, the Eiffel Tower, an ancient town that I talked about in part two. So you immediately connected that, and that was really good. Um, and then uh, you answered... Um, I think it is good for countries to welcome tourists. Our government has developed infrastructure to welcome tourists. And you said that has brought a lot of uh, jobs and you use the number thousands of jobs, which is really, really good. OK, when you when you say improved infrastructure, Fuang, what kind of infrastructure improves for tourism? Um, well, I think um, they build more uh, entertainment places like resorts or um, uh, uh, shopping centers, sir. Think infrastructure. And this is what I want to encourage everybody to do. This topic has come up a couple times today is to be a visual thinker. Okay, so Fuang, as you're getting better and better with your English, with your pronunciation, I really want you to also focus on, and I think I gave this advice to Andrew maybe earlier, to really see the information that you're talking about. So when I picture tourists coming to Canada, right? What I picture in my mind is people flying with airport or in, with airplanes into airports, right? Do you kind of see that when you think about tourists coming to Vietnam? Do you see people flying with an airplane? Uh, yes, I can imagine uh, this. Right. So, what kind of infrastructure would improve with tourism, for example, in a country yeah. like Vietnam? Like transport stations. Transportation, specifically like airports or. Um, uh, different uh, seaports around uh, Vietnam as well, right? Vietnam is surrounded uh, by some water as well. So um, definitely uh, that part of the infrastructure, right? So you want to maybe mention that. So our government has developed uh, infrastructure to welcome tourists. Um, 
In fact, the international airport in Hanoi uh, has been completely uh, renovated in the last five years, right? Welcome tourists. Um, in fact, the international airport in Hanoi has been um, completely renovated in the past five years, right? Can you try that sentence? So our government has developed infrastructure to welcome tourists. In fact, the international airport in Hanoi has been completely renovated in the past five years. Uh, okay, sir. Our government has developed infrastructure to welcome tourists. In fact, the international airport in Hanoi has been completely renovated in the past 10 years. Okay, good. Yeah, so see, that's what I mean by visual information. So you see those tourists coming in and you see this brand new airport as a result of the increased tourism. Does that make sense, how I'm telling you that information? Uh, yes, um, that's I need to elaborate the information, uh, right, sir? Yes, exactly. And that's where a lot of IELTS students, when you're in the actual IELTS exam, you hear that question from the examiner, like, can you elaborate? Can you elaborate? But if you're doing well, if you're elaborating on your answers, they won't actually ask that in many cases. That's a good sign. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, sir. All right. Fuang, keep up the good practice and we'll talk again hopefully next week. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, have a nice day. Thank See you. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, Fuang. All right. That was Fuang. Uh, students, elaborating in part three is absolutely crucial to get a good score but also at the same time staying on topic. So you really have to balance uh, the amount of information, the detail that you give. Um, so you really want to, you know, and I think Andrew said this as well, is just record yourself or go back and listen to these um, lessons again on YouTube and then pay attention and go, okay, where could I add a little bit of detail that would just make it more visual, uh, clear for the examiner what we're talking about. Okay. All right. Thank you for all the thumbs up, everybody. So this is the chat interface on the website. Um, talk to each other. There are so many of you beautiful people, beautiful, brilliant brains in here. And I really want you to use those uh, extraordinary minds of yours to uh, improve your English and improve your communication. So talk to each other. Okay. Set up uh, speaking partners. Be polite. Be respectful. Don't share personal information, so keep it focused on IELTS, right? Um, and uh, and you'll be golden. All right, students, that's it for me for today, but I'm back uh, next week. Uh, again, this is aehelp.com that we're using for academic IELTS. Um, join the premium course by clicking on the big red button above my head, that side, right? Uh, imaginary. Um, and then uh, general IELTS, it's this one here, okay? So click that big red button there. And um, and then you're good. You're good. You've got so many tools there to help you prepare for the IELTS. Uh, so uh, next week we've got speaking. We've got writing task one. We've got more reading. So definitely uh, subscribe. Get notifications. You're very welcome. Thank you, members, for your support. Thank you, viewers. It was awesome to have you here. Thank you, Sarah, for moderating. It was great having you in here with us aehelp.com, gltshelp.com. Romalia, I'm not sure if you're in this one, but you mentioned something about um, uh, doing moderation. So hopefully we'll see you doing that in the future as well. Students, keep up the good work. You're all amazing, okay? Much love to all of you wherever you are in the world today. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria here in Western Canada. Bye for now.